The Ukrainian 4th Tank Brigade showed a captured Russian T-72 in service. The tank's hull is from a T-72B3 and the turret from a T-72B1 tank plus the added roof screen. Some of the battalions have T-72 AMTs, T-72As from the late 1970s that Ukraine extensively upgraded in the 1990s. Others have T-72M1s, which are T-72As the Soviet Union and other Warsaw Pact countries, improved with additional armor. Poland and the Czech Republic both manufactured the T-72M1 under license, and each has pledged scores of the 45-ton three-person tanks to the Ukrainian war effort. Altogether, Ukraine has gotten, or soon should get, more than 400 T-72s of all models from its foreign allies. But that doesn't mean the Ukrainian armed forces have enough T-72s, as losses of the best Western-style tanks, Leopard 2s especially, pile up. It's looking increasingly likely that Kyiv will need hundreds more T-72s to replace the 500 or so tanks it has lost, while also equipping new brigades. Which helps to explain why the 4th Tank Brigade went to extraordinary lengths to Klug. Together, a unique T-72 from the wreckage of no fewer than three different tank models. This Frankenstein's monster of a tank underscores Ukraine's escalating tank crisis. In addition to receiving hundreds of T-72s from its allies, Ukraine also has captured from Russia hundreds of T-72s as well as hundreds of T-90s, T-80s, and T-62s. Many of these tanks took damage before their crews abandoned them or died inside of them. Never once to waste a vehicle. The Ukrainians sometime before this spring identified three partially wrecked ex-Russian tanks that, added together, still made one functional tank. A T-72B1 had a working turret, but a damaged hull. A T-72B3 had an intact hull, but was missing a road wheel. An obsolete T-62 had wheels to spare. Technicians combined the wrecks and produced a one-off tank with the turret of a T-72B1, the hull of a T-72B3, and a single T-62 road wheel. This Franken tank appeared on the front line in March and again this month with the 4th Tank Brigade, which has split its battalions between southern and eastern Ukraine. The Franken tank in essence is a T-72B1 with that variant's aging fire controls and 2A46M 125mm main gun, but with a B3's uprated 860 horsepower diesel engine in place of the B1's less powerful 780 horsepower diesel, it's ugly and weird and probably less capable than the 4th Brigade's best T72 AMTs, but more capable than its T72 M1s. In any event, the awkward Franken tank speaks to Ukraine's desperate need for more and better armored fighting vehicles as the wider war grinds toward its third year. Ukraine's military announced on Tuesday that the milestone of Russian soldiers killed in action since the Kremlin's February 2022 invasion had reached 300,000. Circumstantial evidence supports the figure, but just how accurate it actually is, is another question. The Armed Forces of Ukraine has published precise daily numbers for the Russian personnel its intelligence officers believe died in combat or otherwise lost their lives during the previous 24 hours. However, the Ukrainians does not facilitate independent checks of its estimates and the media is banned from the lines of contact. It only rarely allows independent observers to contact selected frontline troops, and then under the supervision of an escort officer. To date, the Ukrainian army has refused to allow outside checks of its battlefield estimates on grounds of security. According to open source reports and interviews held by Kyiv Post with army officers and enlisted personnel, the Ukrainian daily data of eliminated Russian service personnel is mainly acquired through the study of video recordings by drones of Russian corpses lying on the ground. To a much lesser extent, the Ukrainians will use confirmed casualty counts from Russian medical treatment centers, particularly civilian hospitals in the occupied territories, and, in rarer cases, information gathered by its behind-the-lines agents. 
Ukrainian spokesmen have repeatedly claimed their methodology is rigorous and internally checked, and that their estimated numbers of Russian dead, although impossible to compute with total precision in a total war, are as accurate as possible and very likely close to reality. According to official Ukrainian estimates, the Russian army's worst months for casualties were in March 2022 during the early weeks of the invasion. In Battle of Bakhmut, the first half of 2023, and in recent weeks following massed frontal attacks on Ukrainian fortified defenses around the city of Divka. If the figure of 300,000 Russian soldiers dead over the past 20 months is accurate, then this represents not just a material and operational near disaster for the Russian military, but a real body blow for Russian Federation demographics. In a Monday post on his personal Telegram channel, Anton Gerashchenko, a Ukrainian interior ministry advisor and one of the highest profile Ukrainian spokesmen, portrayed what 300,000 corpses amounted to in terms calculated to raise Ukrainian public spirit. 300,000 dead Russians, Gerashchenko informed readers of his blog, is more than the sum total of every Roman soldier who served in every Roman legion at the height of the empire is the equivalent of one Russian soldier being killed every three minutes. The number is such that, if laid end to end from Moscow to St. Petersburg, you could walk on corpses the whole distance without ever touching the ground. There are so many bodies that if they were to put into body bags and piled it neatly in Red Square, the stacks would cover the square completely in piles as tall as a man. Some outside observers question the Ukrainian official and social media estimates. One of the most recent and detailed research papers on the subject, published by the European Center for Political Research, estimated the Ukrainian either by accident or intentionally inflates the evidence it has on the number of Russian soldiers killed in combat by a factor of two. France 24 News said that a joint investigation conducted by a Russian media outlet and a Germany-based data scientist using open-source Russian data in July came up with the number of Russian service personnel killed in Ukraine at about one quarter the official Kyiv number. Another source, the Russian government Registry of Inheritance Claims, suggests that the Kremlin was most likely losing 2,500 to 3,000 troops in Ukraine each month in 2023. If the rate of Russian military deaths since February 2022 is based guesswork with estimates varying so widely, finding a trustworthy and independently checked estimate of Ukrainian casualties is nigh on impossible. August comments to local media by Mikhailo Podolyak, a senior advisor to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, restated the official Kiev line that public announcements on Ukrainian casualty figures are the prerogative of the Army General Staff. The last time figures were given was in December when Podolyak said in a television interview that the Ukrainian military had lost 10 to 13,000 soldiers. During periods of intense battle, Ukrainian forces, particularly in fighting around Bakhmut in summer 2022, were estimated to be losing between 700 to 1,000 men and women a day. Since then, with the exception of a stalled offensive launched a year later, Ukrainian losses, according to unit reports, have been substantially less, but continuous nevertheless. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warhawk Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description.